Guys, I'm back with another video for you today. We're talking about Oud. I haven't done an Oud video in some time now, and I thought I'd update an Oud video, but focusing on designers. So Oud fragrances from designers, and most of these are from designers' luxury collections. But as bonus options, I've got a few less expensive options as well. So you might want to stick around for those after the outro. But today it's a top 20 Oud fragrances video from designers. If you're curious to learn about these, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Are you a fan of Oud in fragrances? It was popular for some time. I don't know if it's as popular anymore, the idea or genre of Oud fragrances, but they seem to be very popular still from what I see out there. People tend to really like Oud, and basically it's woody fragrances utilizing Oud, and I'm not 100% sure if all of these that are in these fragrances are all natural Ouds. Most are probably, maybe some are not, and these are more of the westernized Ouds rather than the, the funky Middle Eastern kind of Ouds. But I've got 20 of them here for you. And you probably know a lot of these uh, fragrances. They've probably been mentioned here and there in my videos. And it's a great way to discover designer oud fragrances by watching this video. So why don't we go ahead and get started with the first fragrance. Going to the house of YSL. It's Splendid Wood. It's called Splendid Wood, but it focuses on oud with other woods. But there's also some floral notes like jasmine and rose. There's a bit of incense. There's cedar, cardamom, and a pretty prominent cypriol note. And this is a very distinct smell. It's a type of a woody a note that's used in fragrances that does have a bit of a sour characteristic to it and also can smell a bit like a cross between vetiver and patchouli and some other woods together. So it's ranked here at the bottom. It's not one of my all-time favorite designer oud fragrances, but definitely if you like the idea of a spicy oudy woody fragrance with the uh, light traces of flowers in there, then try Splendid Wood from the house of uh, YSL. So then we're going to a male targeted release from the house of Bulgari. It's Falkar, this one right here. Let me show you the gem on top. Can we focus? There we go. So this Falkar, this is from Bulgari. There, it's from their Le Gem collection of fragrances, and they kind of split them up between masculine or male targeted ones versus feminine ones. If you like the fragrance and you're a woman and you can totally wear it. This one goes into a bit of an animalic direction, but also the thing is the fragrances are created by Jean... Um, oh God, what's his name? Uh, Jacques Cavalier, I should say, who also makes the fragrances for Louis Vuitton. Uh, and they have like a DNA running across it, just like the Louis Vuitton fragrances. And this fragrance here, Falcar, does remind me a bit of the DNA of Tigar. But this is Oud with black musk. There's cypriol, saffron, olibanum, nutmeg, and cinnamon. So there's a leathery quality or characteristic here because the saffron is pretty prominent. And then also uh, a bit animalic as well. So Falcar at number 19. I'm having a problem focusing today. Uh, up next, going to the house of Van Cleef and Arpel, it's Precious Oud, this one right here. Come on now, let's focus, there we go. So Van Cleef and Arpel has two fragrances on this list, and what I decided to do is pull all my designer Oud fragrances for this video. And it seems like the less expensive options are kind of discontinued. Uh, so there's two that I have that are still on the market, pretty easy to buy. That's why I left them at uh, as bonus options. But here with Precious Oud, we've got a floral take on Oud from Van Cleef and Arpel, which features notes of Oud with sandalwood, but it also has tuberose and jasmine. These are pretty prominent here, along with patchouli, incense, ambergris, and pink pepper. So we've got the Oud prominently here. It's very woody. There's earthy touches, but an overdose of white flowers. So it's a nice contrast. I think it works here, but definitely not one of my all all time favorites in the collection so that's why it's here at number 18 but we've got precious oud from van cleef and arpel stay tuned for the second one to come later moving on to the house of boucheron this is oud de carthage this one right here this is a fragrance created by um, dominic ropion this one to me uh, is kind of a take on oud with leather but it also has some sweet ambery touches as well so it's kind of a fusion of the dry woody elements of the oud and woods with kind of syrupy powdery take on amber touches 
use as well. So there's tonka beans, labanum, honey, and incense. So it sweetens up, contrast with the incense, and of course, uh, you know, dry and woody with the oud. So Boucheron's Oud de Carthage is here at uh, number 17. And then moving on to the house of Dior, it's Oud Espahan. Oud Espahan is ranked kind of low. Um, it is a great fragrance, don't get me wrong, but it seems a bit thin for me. That's why it's kind of ranked here. It smells great. It does have a bit of animalic touches, but it's an overdose of rose with oud with spicy touches, and there's a bit of skank in here that I quite like. So it's oud, rose, woods, smoke, resins, myrrh, floral notes. It's a really great smelling fragrance, but it just seems a lacking in substance a little bit. It's for those folks that don't want beast mode, but they want a bit of a skanky, uh, rosy oud fragrance. So Dior's Oud Espahan is at number 16. So up next, go into the house of Gucci. It's the voice of the snake. We've got two fragrances from Gucci. Uh, here we go. I'm trying to try to get this thing to focus a little more. So Gucci's The Voice of the Snake is basically very oody, woody, earthy, and leathery. So it's got oud, patchouli, and saffron as notes, and that's pretty much it, but you definitely get a bit of skank in here. Definitely you get the earthiness from the patchouli and leathery, aromatic spiciness from the saffron. For me, when I'm wearing it, I also get a bit of nuttiness. I don't know where that comes from, which is kind of cool. I like that about it and it's not very complex when you wear it so it might also need to be layered with something and you can get there a song of the rose from Gucci and layer it with the uh, voice of the snake if you want to kind of spice it up a little bit with some rosiness so the voice of the snake at number 15 from the house of Gucci then we've got Lancôme's Eau de Bouquet this one right here for a rose gourmand take on Oud. It's a very popular fragrance, I think. People seem to really like this one, and because it's also popular, there are clones out there of this one. But it's Oud Rose Praline Vanilla Gayak Wood Kopahu Balm. So it's very ambery and also gourmand with some sweet chocolatey touches. But of course, rose and oud woodiness is pretty prominent in this. So it's Lancôme Oud Bouquet. Who's a fan of that one? Let me know. Put a comment down. Up next, going to the house of Givenchy in their La Particular, La Collection Particular fragrances. This is the first of two fragrances from this collection. It is Foudroyant, this one right here. Foudroyant is an ambery, spicy take on Oud. It's not my favorite from the collection. There's my favorite coming up soon. But it's definitely pretty solid. If you like the idea of an ambery Oud fragrance, definitely check this one out. You, you have notes of Canada cedar leaf, tolu balsam, labdanum, and Malaysian Oud. So it's the tolu balsam with the labdanum that's creating the ambery touches here. There's woods and spiciness. You get some spiciness and smokiness from the uh, labdanum, and then you've got some sweet syrupy balsamic touches from the tolu, but it's kind of beautiful to wear, and I like that combination of the sweet and syrupy, spicy, powdery, uh, ambery notes with the woods and the oud. Quite nice. Foudroyant from the house of uh, Givenchy. Uh, let me know if you are a fan of that one. Then, moving on to the house of Van Cleef and Arpel once again, and it's Oud Blanc, this one right here. So this one I wasn't a really fan of when I did my ranked list of... Uh, a uh, collection extraordinaire fragrances uh, video some time ago but this has kind of grown on me and it kind of also reminds me a little bit of oud bouquet so this is van cleef and arpel take on uh, oud bouquet i think so this one has notes of oud vanilla incense rose white musk and aldehydes so it's a light oud to wear with light notes in fact the collection uh, the blanc collection from van cleef and arpel they're all blanc, like pure, clean, kind of takes on very kind of uh, potent notes. And that's what they've done here. They've taken oud into a more pure, clean, and easier to wear direction. Of course, you've got aldehydes, which gives it a lift. It gives you the kind of airy, fizzy touch. But you've got oud rose and vanilla in here with some incense. So it's oud blanc from the house of Van Cleef and Arpel. I believe that's created by Anne Flippo, uh, who works for IFF. Um, featuring this fragrance in this collection, I'm categorizing Guerlain and as part of um, uh, designers. Uh, so it's Oud Essential, this one right here. And to me, this seems like a 
Eau de Fragrance take on Bois Mysterio because it has a similar DNA to me and I like that about it. It also features the saffron and the leather that's also prominent in the Bois Mysterio but it's a oody take on it. So it's leather, saffron, cedarwood, there's rose, geranium, incense, gayak wood. So it's very oody, it's very woody, it's leathery and then of course it's also spicy and aromatic. Quite nice fragrance, that's why it's ranked pretty high. This is Oud Essential from the house of Guerlain. Uh, a wonderful offering. So this next one at number 10 is from the house of Gucci, but it was kind of gone for a while. It had launched like three years prior to, or maybe even four or five years prior to when they launched Guilty Oud. Gucci launched Guilty Oud, and I think now they've, since then, they've shelved it, and they've brought Intense Oud back. So for the longest time, I couldn't find a bottle of this thankfully I have a bottle now and it's a great oud fragrance from a designer that's why it's ranked really high here and I think that was the reason why it's they brought out that guilty oud and they kind of put this one on the back shelf or something like or maybe like didn't produce a lot now it's back you can find them at the discounters not really widely selling but it's definitely a great oud it's oud with patchouli there's saffron there's bulgarian rose pear orange flower and raspberry so there's some light fruity notes in here there's some floral touches but in the end it's a very dark uh, you know intense designer oud fragrance that's quite nice and definitely great to wear so gucci intense oud at number 10 and then we're going to the house of Tom Ford. We've got two fragrances from Tom Ford. And it looks like I have three fragrances from Gucci now that I included Gucci Intense Oud. But at number nine, it's Tom Ford's Oud Wood. Very popular Oud fragrance. Can we get this focused? It's a very mass an easy to wear oud I think I think it's definitely a very mass I would I shouldn't say mass mass but it's definitely very easy to wear is probably more prominent for me to say about this more correct to say about it so it's oud rosewood sandalwood cardamom vanilla Sichuan pepper it's very dry it's very spicy it's very woody with some light sweetness throughout in there and some spice to give you that really great classy oudy uh, fragrance to wear so oud wood from the house of can we get this focused from the house of Tom Ford at number nine. And then going to the house of Armani is Rose the Arabi, this one right here. Once again, we've got a rose and oud combo fragrance from a designer. This to me is the ultimate in rose and oud fragrances. I just wish the performance was much better than what we get. It's moderate, but I wanted it to be beastly. I think we were talking about oud Bahan earlier. So oud Bahan and Rose the Arabi Definitely not very great performing fragrances, but they both smell really, really great. They're a bit different in the end, the combination of oud and rose, but it's rose, oud, saffron, patchouli, and amber here. It's a very, very luxurious smelling fragrance from Armani, and I really love the way it smells, but just wish uh, the performance was better because it is a bit lacking. The only other thing I want to say about the Armani Privé fragrances that are selling here in San Francisco, Neiman Marcus was selling the collection for the long as time I hear they are removing this collection I don't know why uh, is this collection kind of dying out if anybody knows let me know but uh, Armani's Rose de Arabi is at number eight but moving on to the house of Dior once again we've got purple oud I really really like purple oud I think it's definitely kind of in the category uh, of ouds from designers like oud wood from Tom Ford uh, but this one to me kind of reminds me a bit of the vetiver in um, uh, Encre Noir from Lalique, uh, but very spicy here, very woody, a bit leathery, and also some light citruses under there as well because it has oud, pink pepper, saffron, and orange. I think it's a great fragrance and definitely deserves to be on the list. I really like it. It's easy to wear, and if I'm craving like a very designer oud fragrance, uh, I would go for uh, purple oud from the house of uh, Dior. And then this one's a surprise for me. I'm surprised how great it is. This is Gucci's A Reason to Love. So yeah, I do have three Gucci fragrances, two from their Alchemist Garden fragrances and one from their signature line. A Reason to Love is really great. It's a floral take on Oud once again, and it's Damask Rose with Peony. So Peony to me already has a bit, bit of a rosiness, and you'll always see Rose and Peony together. They kind of complement one another in fragrances, which is perfect here, along with the Oud Tolu Balsam and some uh, you know fresh spice from Cardamom. It's a fantastic fragrance to wear. I really like it. The Peony doesn't really give it... Um, very intense floral sea because the rose is a bit overpowering it just kind of contributes some uh you know amplifying the rosiness which i quite like in a reason to love so a reason to love from the house of gucci 
uh, a great fragrance. If you haven't tried it, uh, do try that one. I do recommend it. But moving on to the house of uh, Costume National, this is Soul. Custom National Soul is a great designer fragrance. The only issue with this fragrance is, or the brand in general, they're not distributed very widely here in the States anymore. So it might be a bit tough, but it's still in production. I know it is, and you can find it. It's a fragrance created by Dominic Ropion once again, and it's leather with oud, ambergris, cardamom, pink pepper, vanilla. So it's a bit ambery, vanillic, and then also very spicy, and then of course woody, and it has a bit animalic qualities under there and leathery touches as well. Really great fragrance deserve to be on the list so it's costume national soul at uh, number five and then louis vuitton's ombre nomade are you guys familiar with ombre nomade this is a really great designer fragrance it is very pricey but a great designer oud fragrance from louis vuitton once again created by jacques cavalier it features notes of oud wood with benzoin incense raspberry birch amber wood geranium saffron and incense there might be a bit of light rosiness in here so there's a bit of that but there's definitely fruitiness and smokiness leathery touches in the end the really great smelling designer oud fragrance so louis vuitton's ombre nomade definitely a top-notch oud fragrance pricey but quality and really really great long longevity with that one as well and then we're going to the house of cartier it's oud radio this one right here can we focus there we go oud radio is one of the best designer oud fragrances for me absolutely love it it's a zingy ginger balm of an oud fragrance love the combination of the ginger with the oud it's dry it's spicy just imagine ginger wasabi from uh, sushi but it's that kind of a zing and then spice and a bite and a kick kind of a thing with the oud so it's kind of the the element of some uh, dryness with the oud and also some um, you know spice that's kind of not necessarily very dry so because it adds some moisture to the fragrance and then there's also the Swishwam pepper here with its kind of peppery spice, but also lemony. And the combination is heavenly. I absolutely love it. Really, really love the realistic ginger smell in this. And uh, I recommend it highly. So this is uh, Oud Radeau. Can we focus? Uh, from the house of Cartier from their luxury collection. And then at number two, I'm still finding these fragrances. It is definitely still in release in Europe, especially the UK, not in the USA for some reason. It's Tom Ford's Tobacco Oud. Tom Ford's Tobacco Oud is one of the best tobacco fragrances. I should, I should say one of the best private blend collection fragrances. It is really to die for. It is a bit skanky. You've got to be into that but it is smelling fantastic. So it's tobacco with oud, spices, sandalwood, incense, patchouli, cinnamon, whiskey, benzoin, vanilla, cedar. I didn't mention cumin. There's definitely a bit of a cumin touch in here, which I quite like, but I love the spices and I love the tobacco in here that's dirty, kind of ashy tobacco, the booze, the whiskey touches, and then of course uh, the oud in here. It's a really, really great fragrance. You can still buy it at Harrods. You can still buy it at Selfridges, and I see some stock at uh, discounters as well but not at retailers that sell the brand i don't know why but either way tobacco oud at number two wonderful fragrance and then my number one favorite fragrance going to the house of Givenchy once again once again number one favorite oud designer oud fragrance it's noctambule this one right here so Noctambule was such a breath of fresh air when I first got this fragrance. I bought it from, I think it was Saks that I ordered it from. And then Saks decided to get rid of the collection. Not sure why. I think it went to Nordstrom. But Noctambule, I love the combination. And even though I'm a bit bored of rose, the way the rose works with the oud in here is so great. It's a dried fragrance, but there's enough jamminess with the rose in this to give it some, you know, ambery kind of uh, moisture in there. But it's Centifolia Rose. And it's a fusion of rose centifolia and also the essence from grass with Malaysian oud essence and papyrus accord. But what you get in here is also a bit of cumin touch once again. It's kind of like a dry spice in here with a combination of the other notes. It's super heavenly. I love the way it smells and that's why it deserves to be at number one. So Noctambule from the house of Givenchy. If you haven't tried it, please do try it. I really think it's a great fragrance and I absolutely love wearing it. Anyway, that's my top 20 list of designer oud fragrances. What are your thoughts on these fragrances? Are you a fan of them? And is there anything missing? Of course, I don't have the entire 
world of fragrances here but these are what i have in my collection and i think definitely deserves to be checked out if you're a fan of designer oud fragrances so let me know what else is missing put a comment down let me know which of these fragrances are your favorites i'd like to find out but either way guys thanks so much for watching today's video if you have any questions or comments please list below please like this video please share it follow me on instagram and facebook and i'll be back with more videos very soon have a good one goodbye So I do want to offer a couple of bonus uh, options here. First of which is Les Sable Roses from the house of Louis Vuitton. Uh, it's a great layering duo when you combine it with Ombre Nomad. So if you think Ombre Nomad is missing a little bit of rose, because Les Sable Roses is missing a bit of oud. It has a little bit of oud. It's missing a lot of oud is what I should say. But the two together, wow, what a combo. Very nuclear, really great smelling. I absolutely love the two together because it's a rose overdose with the Les Sable Roses. And then with the oud, of the uh, Ombre Nomad, I think it makes for a great combination. And then the two uh, uh, designer uh, fragrances that are oud and less expensive, I would say, are the Oud Noir from Versace, this one, and then uh, for Bentley for Men Absolute, uh, both of which can be worn for by women, uh, but they're definitely classy and definitely recommended budget oud fragrances from the designers that are still on the market today. So Oud Noir and Bentley for Men Absolute are the bonus options. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for tuning in today. Have a good one. Goodbye.